Hi everyone, today I wanted to answer a question that I have gotten from many of you and that has to do with the reluctant learner or a child who is very resistant to doing their schoolwork. Maybe you have a child who every time they sit down to do an assignment, um, they just start crying, they just get frustrated and that makes you frustrated. Or maybe you have a child who is just resisting you at every turn and you are just ready to pull out your hair. Maybe you have anger on both sides, your child and you, you're just angry with each other and frustrated with each other. What do you do? Now, this is kind of a complicated question for me to answer because there are a lot of different reasons why our child, why any specific child might be reluctant to learning, why they might be resistant to doing their schoolwork. And obviously, depending on the reason that they're resistant to doing schoolwork is going to um, mean that there's a different solution to that problem. And of course, you could have two kids that are both resistant to doing school for the exact same reason, and there could be a different solution for both of them. Because children are unique, our family situations are unique, the curriculum we're using is unique, um, and so there's just a lot involved in terms of figuring out why are a child is reluctant to learn, why they are resisting you when it comes to homeschooling, and what the solution is. Now, I've written about this on my blog already, and I will leave those two blog posts down below. I wrote one blog post about the young reluctant learner, that's for children in the elementary school age range, and then I wrote one for older kids, why your older kid might hate school and what you should do about that, so that's for more for junior high and high school. But in this video, I want to take a little bit different approach to answering the question about what do you do when you have a child who's resisting doing schoolwork. And what we're going to do is I'm going to look at the three most common reasons why a child might be resistant to doing homeschool work. Um, this obviously, these are not the only reasons. These are just three of them that I see the most often, and we're gonna look at them by asking three diagnostic questions. Three questions to kind of get us thinking and about our child and maybe what is at the root. Um, what is the root reason why they are resistant and reluctant to do their schoolwork? So let's go ahead and jump right in and look at these three questions of why your child might be resistant to doing homeschool. So here we go, let's take a look at homeschooling the reluctant learner. I said that we were gonna look at three diagnostic questions to help get to the root of the issue. Now, like I said, these are just the most common that I have seen, but I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment down below with some of the reasons that you have seen for a reluctant learner. Now, question number one that I think is important to ask is, is this task or assignment developmentally appropriate for my child? Another way to ask that is, am I asking them to do something that they are not developmentally able to do? And I think this is really, really important question to ask because sometimes we forget that our children are children and they might not be developmentally ready to take on the task or the assignment that we are asking them to do. And that is going to cause them to be reluctant and to be frustrated as we're teaching them. Now, there's three areas of development that we need to think about. The first one is physically. Is my child physically able to do this task that I am asking them to do? Are their fine motor skills developed enough to hold a pencil or to sit still for the time that I am asking them to sit still? These are important questions that we need to ask. Can they physically um, do the task at hand. The next thing that we want to ask is, or the next area that we want to look at is mentally. Um, what is your child's attention span like? Are they able to understand cause and effect? Can they think critically? Can they analyze information and form an opinion? If you are asking them to analyze information and form an opinion, you want to make sure that they're developmentally ready and able to do that. If you are asking them to sit for a long period of time, you want to make sure that they are mentally able to do that. Um, if you're asking them to think critically or to understand cause and effect, again, 
we want to make sure that our children are developmentally uh, ready to do those mental tasks that we're asking them for. And a lot of times we kind of assume that they are ready for those and they just really aren't developmentally ready. The next area of de development that we want to think about is emotional. Um, is my child emotionally um, ready, emotionally developed to handle what I'm asking them to do, the task at hand, the lesson, the assignment. Um, another way to ask this is, is he emotionally capable of remaining calm when he makes a mistake? I think we just assume that our kids, when they fail at something, that that means, hey, um, no big deal. I can deal with it. I can bounce back. But you guys, they are little and failure to them is huge. And if they are going to maybe do a math problem and get it wrong, they might not be emotionally ready to handle that disappointment and that failure. So we want to make sure that they have the ability to handle failure, to handle discouragement. And sometimes this is just, this can be, we can help them with this just by breaking things up into smaller chunks for them and, and giving them smaller tasks to do and having them work on one thing over and over again until they have success in that and giving them confidence in that and so they can go on and try something a little bit harder. It also might mean just giving them lots of encouragement and letting them know it is okay if you don't get this problem correct. I am right here, I am helping you. We are gonna work together on this, giving them lots of positive feedback and encouragement so that um, they don't get so discouraged when they fail. So we wanna think about where our child is developmentally, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Now, if you say, hey, my child can handle this, they, they're developmentally ready for this task, this assignment, this subject, and they are still fighting me, they are still a reluctant learner. Well, let's go on to question number two. Is this a behavior issue? Is this maybe something that you are seeing, this, um, this behavior, are you seeing this in other areas of your child's life? Maybe there's laziness, maybe there's disrespect, disobedience. Is this something that you're just seeing during school time or is it something that you are seeing in other areas when you're asking them to do chores, when they are with friends, are they disrespectful to other adults? If the answer to that is yes, then that means that it is a heart issue. And a heart issue, guys, is something that we really, really need to give attention to. I think sometimes we think, oh, that's just a behavior issue, um, not, you know, it's okay, they'll outgrow it. But you guys, God's word speaks to this very clearly. And in Luke 6, 45, God's word says, the good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. That means that the things that our children are saying, their behaviors are an overflow of what is in their heart. And that means that we really need to take time to deal with and invest in the hearts of our children. That might mean that we set aside some school time and we don't do school and we just really focus on looking at God's word and studying God's word and dealing with the hearts of our children. Um, but we want, also want to make sure that we are dealing with the hearts of our children, the heart issues, not only during school hours, but outside of school time as well. If you're seeing that your child is lazy, disrespectful, or disobedient, or whatever other sin issue that they are struggling with in their heart, that you're addressing that. And the best way to address this is by pointing them back to Christ giving our kids the hope of the gospel. Nobody wants to be disciplined over and over and over again for something that they're struggling with, a sin that they're struggling with, without any hope of being able to change. Our kids need to know that Christ is there for them, that he has paved the way, that they can come to Christ for forgiveness, and that they can receive Christ's perfect record, that they can become believers, have the Holy Spirit, um, 
come and live inside of them and to help them to do what is right, to make good decisions. So we want to be pointing our children back to Christ, back to the gospel. A great resource um, to help you in this is a book by Elise Fitzpatrick and Jessica Thompson. It's called Give Them Grace, Dazzling Your Kids with the Love of Jesus. Absolutely love this book, highly recommend it. I will leave a link to it down below. But let's make sure that we are dealing with our children's heart issues. If that is the main reason or one of the reasons that we are seeing um, some reluctance in them doing their schoolwork. So if you are looking at question number one and you're saying, I really think my child is developmentally ready to do this task or this subject or this assignment, and you have thought about question number two and you thought, no, I, I don't think this is a behavior issue. This isn't an issue of the heart. Well, let's jump on into question number three. Is this a topic or subject that my child has little interest in? And another part to this question is, is the method of instruction making it hard for them to grasp the information or to get excited about the topic? See, sometimes um, our kids are struggling and they're resistant to doing school because the topic just doesn't interest them. I mean, I don't know about you, but there are some things that I'm not interested in either and I really don't care to learn about and I kind of resist learning because I just don't have any interest in that. And that might be your child's um, issue when it comes to being resistant, reluctant to do schoolwork. They just might not care about that subject. Um, in that case, you probably want to spend some time with your child, um, you know, letting them know the importance and the significance of learning that particular subject. You know, if it's math, you can let them know why math is important. We need to balance our checkbook or, you know, whatever. We need math for everyday life and, and buying things and selling things and paying taxes and all that kind of stuff. Um, so letting them know why that topic, that subject is important, why they need to learn about it. Now, if it is more of the method of instruction. Maybe your child is excited. Maybe it's science and they normally love science, but they are just fighting you doing the science um, assignment. Maybe it's the method of instruction that is making it hard for them to grasp the information or to get excited about the topic. Maybe they love science, but they hate reading a textbook about it. It's just dull and boring to them. And so they need something different. Maybe they need hands-on um, experiments or reading through library books or watching videos or whatever it is. Maybe there is just a different way, um, a different method of instruction that's going to get them more excited about the information and the topic that you want them to be learning about. So there's a couple things that we can do here when if you think this is the issue. If this is maybe just not a topic your child's interested in or maybe the method of instruction is just not um, meshing well with your child. Um, two things that you could do. First, you could cha change things up. You could tweak the curriculum that you have. You could get a new curriculum. Um, you can, um, you know, uh, just maybe add in more hands-on experiments, or if your child is more visual, add in more visual things. If they are more auditory, um, get them books on tape. So you can change things up. It doesn't mean that you have to buy a whole new curriculum. You could just tweak what you already have, but you might just need to change things up a bit for your child to make it more interesting to them. This works really well if it ha happens to be the method that is hindering your child from, you know, really enjoying the subject and, um, you know, is the reason that they're fighting and being reluctant. Now, if your child is just not interested in the subject and they have no interest in the subject and they just think, why do I have to learn this? You know what? You might just have to keep at it. There are some subjects that our kids are never going to like, but they still need to learn the basics in those subjects. And so helping them see the benefit of learning that subject, reminding them um, about the importance of persevering through difficult things and things that you don't like to do, that's a great skill to learn in life. So that's something that we can just encourage our children in. You know, maybe we still tweak things a little bit and try to make it as interesting as possible for them, but sometimes it just comes down to letting them know 
this is the information that you need to learn and we're just going to have to persevere through this. And that kind of comes back to the heart issue, doesn't it? Um, maybe your child just is fighting you because they want what they want. They want to learn what they want to learn and they don't care about other things. And so that, that might come back to the heart issue as well. Like I said, sometimes um, it could be all three of these issues um, or just two of them or just one of them or something completely different. So um, again, thinking about thinking through these questions can maybe help you dig a little bit deeper into what your child might be struggling with and why they are resisting. So just a quick wrap up, is the task or assignment developmentally appropriate for your child? Maybe is this a behavior issue, um, which is really a heart issue, or is this topic or subject something that my child has little interest in, or is this a method of instruction that is making it hard for them to grasp the information? I hope these three diagnostic questions um, helped you to dig a little bit deeper and, and think a little bit more about what might be at um, the heart of why your child is resistant to doing their schoolwork. Obviously, these are just the three most common ones that I have seen. Your child might be resistant to doing their homeschool work for a completely different reason, or it might be all three of those combined, or just one of them plus something else. And so remember that your child is unique. And the the best thing that we can do for our children is to go before the Lord and to pray for our child and to pray for ourselves that we would have grace as we educate them and as we parent them and that we would ask the Lord to give us wisdom as we raise our children and as we educate them at home. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, uh, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with other homeschool moms who you think would be encouraged by it as well. And as always, don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified of new videos in the future.